everybody, it's Rebecca Virginia, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do three spring DIYs using items from the Dollar Tree. These all came out looking really high-end, and you'd never be able to guess that they were just using items from the Dollar Tree. If you're excited for this video and want to see more, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell so you never miss out on a future video. Let's get started with the spring DIYs. The first DIY in today's video is an indoor pedestal birdhouse. Here is everything that you'll need to make this DIY on your own. To start off this DIY, I'm taking one of the wood birdhouses from the crafter square section of the Dollar Tree. I've seen these birdhouses many times and walked by them and didn't pick them up because I couldn't think of a DIY to do with them. So finally, I was like, I'm going to pick it up and come up with a DIY. So I'm starting off just by painting my birdhouse entirely in white. I knew I wanted to do something with the roof, but I figured I would just paint the entire thing first and then I could figure out from there if I wanted to use paint or some scrapbooking paper. And I did take a smaller detailed brush to go underneath the roof and around the little knobs on the birdhouse and get inside the crevices. I was really inspired by these paper plates at the Dollar Tree. I use a couple different ones throughout today's video and I just loved the vibrant colors and how springy it looked and it really got me in the mood to use some brighter colors. So I painted part of the birdhouse with this almost periwinkle, it's like a purpley blue color. And then this is a fence that I had from a Christmas, wasn't a nativity scene, but it was like a little Christmas village scene. And the Christmas village has long since gone, but I kept this fence just knowing that I was going to use it for a DIY one day. So I knew I wanted to put this fence on the birdhouse and I painted it that matching periwinkle color that I painted on the little bird ledges on the birdhouse. I always get my scrapbooking paper at Hobby Lobby. They always have it on sale for a dollar and I saw this color and I thought it really matched with that bluish purple that I was going for. Today's whole video has a lot of purpley elements. I was just feeling the lavender, the spring, and that color was really speaking to me. So I decided to go with this for my birdhouse roof. Usually I always use Mod Podge when I'm using scrapbooking paper but I had actually forgot that I had this spray adhesive in my blue drawer. So I figured I would bring this out and see if it worked as well as I remembered, and it really does. I didn't have to worry about the wetness of Mod Podge or any of it crinkling. The only downside is this stuff is so sticky, so if you get it anywhere besides where you want to on your project, you have to be really careful because it is going to stick everywhere. But once I sprayed down my adhesive, I was able to adhere the scrapbooking paper to both sides of the roof and I did decide that I was going to paint the little awnings on the roof not add scrapbooking paper there so it made it a lot easier because I didn't have to cut out smaller pieces for that part. Once my fence was all dry I cut it in half just so that I could work around this little bird ledge on the house so I cut that in half and then I just used hot glue to adhere it down and I did have the two little fence posts kind of sticking out so I just went in with some of my miter shears and just cut those off. I ended up not using this little bird figurine that I got in a fairy garden set from the Dollar Tree. I thought it ended up being a little bit too big for the birdhouse, but I did just want to keep it in the video and show you because I do think a little bird figurine would be really cute there if you found one small enough. Then I sanded the inner parts of the birdhouse because some of the wood was chipping out. And I took a light blue color that matched the roof but was still lighter than the fence color. And I just painted that little portion of the roof that the scrapbooking paper didn't cover. Next I took a glass candlestick holder and I painted that with some white chalk paint. And I did have to use a couple of layers just because it was a little bit harder to paint on the glass. Also, if you're not able to find these candlestick holders at your Dollar Tree, I also think that you could put the birdhouse on a wood dowel and then place the wood dowel in a clay pot. That would be a really cute look too. I know these candlestick holders can be a little bit hard to find, so that's another option. The final step is really easy. You're just going to place some hot glue on top of the glass candlestick holder, then get the birdhouse in the position that you like on top and press down. This piece will definitely add a touch of spring to your home decor, and I love being able to incorporate a birdhouse on the inside of your house instead of the outside. 
Next, I'm going to show you how to make and style your very own bird's nest. Here's everything you need to complete your nest. And we're going to start off this DIY by me showing you how to make the nest. So I took a brown paper bag and then I cut off one end just so I had a little less to work with. And then I just started going all the way around the brown paper bag and started rolling it down. It is a little bit hard just because you don't want to rip the brown paper bag, but once you get the hang of it, you just roll it all the way down until it kind of has this nest formation. Then for the next part, I did put on a pair of plastic gloves because the feeling of the wet Spanish moss with the Mod Podge is kind of gross. I didn't like it. So I went ahead and put on a pair of gloves and all that you're going to do is line all around that brown paper bag formation with some Mod Podge and then stick on some Spanish moss. And you're just going to continue doing this, building up the layers. At first, I felt like it wasn't working and everything was sliding around, but once the Mod Podge dries, you'll be able to see that everything does stay in place really well. So I just kept doing the technique of layering Mod Podge, then moss, Mod Podge, then moss. And towards the end, I was a little sick of that technique and I thought maybe a faster way to do it is to just dip the Spanish moss straight into the Mod Podge and then lay it down. And that worked too, so I did that with the top layer. I think either way would be fine. And then once you have pretty successfully built your nest, again, it doesn't look super pretty because of the Mod Podge, but once it dries, it really does look nice. And then you can see that I'm kind of just forming it and molding it with my hands to get it in a nice circular shape. Also, if you have any unruly Spanish moss that's sticking out, you can always go in with a pair of scissors after it's dried and cut off any pieces that are really sticking out. I let my little bird nest dry for 24 hours before I touched it again. So the next day I moved on to the eggs that are going to be going in our little DIY bird nest. I got these styrofoam eggs from the Dollar Tree and then I just took three toothpicks and placed them in the styrofoam eggs. After painting them this light purple lavender color, I stuck the toothpicks down into some floral foam so that the eggs could fully dry. To give my eggs a speckled effect, I took some dark brown paint and a large fluffy paintbrush and I just loaded up my paintbrush with a lot of brown paint and then I pulled the bristles back and it gave this really sporadic, kind of uneven, freckled look. Now that it has been over 24 hours, our nest has perfectly dried, and I even took some twigs that I found outside and added those into the nest as well. And I'm just checking to make sure that the three eggs fit, but I'm not going to glue those down yet, because now is the time to add all of my greenery and floral arrangements. I really liked these Spring florals that the Dollar Tree just came out with. There's tons of greenery and little bits of purple and lavender, and I thought that went perfectly with the eggs, so I just put a bunch of florals in the back of the nest. Once I was happy with my selection and placement of florals, I went ahead and placed those in the nest. I was able to just kind of push them down into the nest, but you could also add a little bit of hot glue on any pieces that might need it. And I did place my eggs back into the nest just to see how they looked next to the florals, but I never glued them down. So now it's time to do that and I'm just using some hot glue to adhere them to the nest. I absolutely love how this nest came out. I think it looks so realistic and I love the pop of purple. The last rustic spring DIY in today's video is a bless our nest sign. Here's what you need to recreate it. I started off this DIY by taking a wood sign that I got all the way back in October and then I grabbed some white chalk paint and I just painted the entirety of the back of our sign. I am going to be covering this with a calendar page but I wanted all of the back to be white because the calendar pages are pretty thin and I didn't want you being able to see the brown bits peeking through. I'm going to be using the September page from the Simply Bless calendar. I thought the bless our nest phrase went perfect with our indoor birdhouse and the bird's nest that we made. And all I did was lay our sign on top of it and traced it out, then cut the bless our nest calendar page. I thought the calendar page would have looked really pretty if I had cut it going vertical on the wood sign as well but I decided to go with the horizontal look. So once I placed it down, I could have used some Mod Podge to adhere it, 
but the calendar pages were so thin and I was really scared that it would rip with Mod Podge. So I just used that spray glue again and sprayed it and then gently laid down the calendar page and smoothed out any bubbles just in case any formed with an old gift card. To add a rustic touch to this sign, I took some dark brown paint and used a dry brushing technique to paint all along the edges of our sign. And right now my sign looks a little weird because obviously the calendar image didn't fill up the entire wood sign. So to kind of fix that, what I'm doing is taking some of this green and white garland. It's so pretty. I got it in the fall time, but I've also seen it recently. I think they're bringing it back out for spring. And if you had a lot of it, you could just wrap it around, but this is the only bit of garland that I have. So to save it, I cut it in the back just so that I could really use as much of it as possible and I don't need it in the back. And then I just hot glued it down and I ended up doing three strands of the green and white garland on each side. And once I placed down the garland, the sign was starting to look better, but I still just felt like it was too white on the edges and something was missing. So I ended up going back in with my brown paint and a paintbrush and I just distressed it even further. I wanted it to look more rustic and not so new and clean. So I added some brown paint to the sides and I even added it to the top and bottom of the sign as well. Something was still a tiny bit off to me and I knew a nice sprig of some florals would fix that. So I went ahead and added in some little white florals to the bottom right corner and then to hang it because I covered up the holes that were originally there with the calendar page, I just hot glued some jute onto the back to act as the hanger. And that completes all of our spring rustic DIYs. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep searching, keep creating.